Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay channel. And in this one, we have an Elise who isn't AFK. She's just um, fetching some hydration to stay hydrated and fresh for this game. In the meanwhile, her team has gone and they delayed level one invader. Hello, Kindred, everyone else. <laughs> the threat of Nautilus Hook is never to be underestimated. Obviously, in this case, I'm not a fan of these level ones, but they can work. They do work. But obviously, approach with caution anything that is cheesy. Obviously, W stud you can use for probing as at least. So in this one, we just had Kindred snowballing, but really snowballing as a Kindred, snowballing as a Rexa, snowballing, snowballing as an Elise. These are different skill sets. But one thing that ties them all together, the one ring of all these champions, if you will, is that they need to close out games fast. That is, is that they need to satisfy win conditions to push the map take the mid game and close that victory. And this was a question that was asked and we will cover more depth on the bootcamp. Tickets below, starts next week, Monday's free. Runes on your screen now, as you will see Dark Harvest, much like the PTA page of at least from last year, just essentially bringing the option of a bit more scaling into the runes, into the champion. I think that's, that's really, really useful um, when you are trying to close games out, but when you've got things like four dragons, you've got things like heralds, you've got scaling compositions against you, you know that with the Azillion, Tom Kench, Jinx, Kindred, and a Scion. If you don't close, it's doomed. So giving up a little bit of damage early to scale yourself is actually considered fine. But what's not fine is compromising your first clears to satisfy some kind of weird uh, cheese strategy you want to do with the least. Let's go, baby. Three camps into ganks, into action every time. You could full camp if that's better for your laner timing, but maybe that's more of a an asterisk point and a general rule of thumb, but definitely buff buff grump is still a good one. Could do this, but I feel like with the single target damage that you have and the ability to use your spiderlings, uh, that's a better play. Now, typically Kindred will do a, th a four count, three count, as we saw, right? So Elise is looking to get onto the map before the Kindred does. If the Kindred decides to do something else, she can essentially invade and destroy all of the Kindred's plans. She also sees and knows that she has Jace versus the Scion, which means ranged versus melee, which means prior for a dive. And if you ain't looking for dives on Elise, stop playing Elise, my friends. Here we go, cut the wave, tank it up, hit the cocoon, very nice. Bring out your uh, Spiderling, the Flash, your Chomp, the Explosion. Don't use your... Did you see that? I'm silent because a lot of things happened and I kind of wanted to process it. Um, we had the Zillion TP regardless. There's Kindred cutting across. So what we see here is if you're paying attention to this dive, and I'm sorry to pause it for those who enjoy the fluidity of it, you kind of know the Kindred's going to be looking to do a 3-4 camp into some kind of action, especially considering Jace is going to have prior over the Scion, which means that Elise is obviously going to look for a dive. And if there's nothing, she can invade and obviously ruin the Kindred's day. In this situation, we see the 15 from the Kindred, all right? We know straight up that the um, Ari is going to stop this TP. Boof, excellent job, thank you very much. So Jace goes back in and dies. Voila, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And we see the Kindred running across, excuse me, <laughs> running across the mid lane there just before in such a way that we know that they're going to be at this crab. So here we go. She goes for the mark. Sorry, they go for the... There's too much happening. I don't think I can process it. Well, this is what happens if you flash for a crab and it works. And it works. How nice is that? Not only that, we also deny the mark. We get to steal away the raptors and we can go ahead and have a cheeky look to add another dive in the mid lane. There you go. At least dives are what you're looking for. Ooh, nice and unfortunate. Uh, whew, just God, we live there. So what do you learn from this as an at least play? Right. Enemy jungler, what do they want to do? What is, it, what is most important for me to cut in front of them, to get onto the map before them, because I am better than them. And when you tilt them, you kill them. Always. But mostly, please look for those three actions, uh, three camp actions. Look for those dives. Look for the low HP targets. It's actually happening so fast. I'm struggling to, to, to explain why we're watching it. And I think that's a very good way of putting Elise. It's a very good way of putting Elise. If you're playing at such a speed um, that essentially you can 
struggle to keep up with your own mind when you're looking at the VOD review, that's great. But if you're playing the champion, this should be easy. Like the flow of the, the game should just come to you naturally. Now, as I said, she did the 50, uh, they did the 15 as they crossed the mid lane. So you can assume that with no red buff that they most likely took um, took some part of your camps, you know, which I, I don't know what the Kindred's route was or why they did that. Especially seeing as top lane would be a free gank. So now Kindred's on the top side, at least just basically uses a bit of patience, transition bot lane, boom. What have you noticed? How is this different from your Elise play? Be very brutally honest about this. How does this affect your Elise play? And why is she doing this right now? You are not pressuring before the enemy jungler. Gank, gank, kill the jungler. Take the crab, kill the jungler. Gank, jungler goes to the wrong side of the map because who knows why. Take the tier two, level four grump. Level four wolves are available. We know that the kindred is gonna go and snack that. That's fine, we'll give them the mark, pity mark. But make sure you are reading the map this fluidly and quickly. And 202, absolute perfect start. This is what you're looking for, is at least. And if you don't, you're going to struggle. Much like the Kindred yesterday. Um, yesterday. Well, in the previous video, whenever you've seen it, on the main channel. Sorry, secondary channel. Um, the Kindred passed in such a way that they could still be aggressive without being cut out from the map. Because sometimes your lane states are not going to be good. And what's going to happen is you're going to try for the dive. Doesn't exist. You're going to try mid lane. Doesn't exist. And if you passed upward, like the Kindred passed upward, you're not going to be pushed out of the side of the map. And you're going to feel like, well, what do I do to get fed? And that's always something that's important. Did you see that? You guys saw that, right? She threw out the W, and as you use your Q on the spider, it takes the W, the spider link, and kamikazes it to whatever you queued. It's a very good thing to know, so you don't always have to push it out in a specific area. If you queue it, you will kill it. Let's see, good rotation, kill. Jace is gonna live from the plants. Exquisite rotations from mid lane, exquisite rotations from, from the jungler. This is it, baby. Level six. Bjergsen, no! Bjergsen, go and die. Okay, Jinx is even rotating. <laughs> Flash is the charm. Tom Kench rotates as well. Can you guys win this 3v3? Think very deeply. This is a fed with Sork Boots Rush. No. Okay, good job with that bottom lane to rotate and save the Zillion. Kindred is tilted. Kindred is struggling, and that's why you play like this. Um, what else did I want to say here? In order to continue this lead, when you have winning lanes, you have to make sure that you keep this pressure up. You see this? How many of you, and again, I do think this is... A bit of an aggressive play, for sure, definitely. But I do kind of like, in principle, keeping this pressure up, but obviously don't don't overcommit. Have your fun, but don't overcommit. This is a huge fiesta. This is all driven by the Elise, by the way. If you have your team with you and you know where the Kindred is and you know you can make a play, do it. But please note, in this particular situation, with this RNG crab being on the bottom side, if you have no lane prior, say something bad happens, just give it up, it's fine. If you can kill the Kindred and the enemy jungler and then get it and get out, do so, please. You must. But don't, don't die for it. At least, level 5. We're compromising our farming. We're compromising our, our, our econ. But the Kindred has not, no econ either. So Kindred's basically playing badly and gets free, free minions on the tower. This game is unhinged in terms of just going, going, going. I like it. I like it because that's kind of like how your mind should be, right? Your mind should always be thinking next move. A little bit of waffling, but we know the Zillion uses ult, although that cooldown because of his kit is not that stressful. He most likely moved up. I don't think this this is waffling. This is waffling now. Um, couple things. Um, she's obviously going to transition to bottom lane. If you see the Kindred here and you know the blue buff is up and you click F keys and see no blue buff and they go up, go steal, go steal, go steal. and Or do the dragon, right? Um, cocoon misses, that's fine. <laughs> Is Jinx... <laughs> I'm looking at the webcam. <laughs> I'm looking at the webcam. I stopped looking at the game. I wanted to pull funny faces at this. So all the skill shots of the world miss. But Ari again is rotating. And this is... You know, you've all had those scenarios where you get your lanes fed and they don't do something. But you also have scenarios where you do get your lanes fed with good play and they do something with it. And I think that's the most crucial thing is you've got to play the game that you're given. And sometimes your laners are not going to use the leads and it's going to be a crapshoot. Sometimes they're going to use the lead and it's still your job to make the right plays to drive them around the map. So, uh, at least we'll have the highest KP, don't worry. Transition this into a dragon. I do feel like this waffling earlier, as I was saying. If you see the Kindred go up, go and yoink, steal, all, you know? But in this case, um, okay, good. I was wondering if we had a, a replay. I've had a replay glitch with the timers lately, and it's kind of affected when I stare at the minimap. Because I don't have FPs in-game, do I? Uh, in a replay. I have to manually click around like a... 
like a Flintstone, basically. So you could have looked for sure to counter jungle this earlier. And then if your bot lane's pushing, you can dive it or you can just gank from this angle. So there's a variety of things you can do, but definitely don't waffle. That waffling wasn't good. Especially seeing as Zillion moved up, you know, we kind of knew it. Um, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to watch because the Kindred took the Herald and the, that was a bit Christopher Walken-y, wasn't it? <laughs> the Kindred took this, used this, broke this. So the Kindred now, and you can always argue this, um, Zillion showing up, be mighty cautious because the, the Scion should rotate here. Everyone's going to respawn. Make sure whatever play you make is decisive and gives you safety. Okay, TP on the bottom, on the left there, you'll see it. Hooks, repel, rooted. Try not to kill the Zillion. Ah, unfortunate that she died. Kindred gets one back, so closing games. Uh, got one. <laughs> Closing games out using these leads. It's never always as cut and dry as you think. Specifically when you overstay, because now what are, what are we at? 1500? Overstay here. <sighs> Kindred has elevated the game state from Kindred's perspective. It takes away the safety net and the compression of top lane. So Jace can, in theory, freeze this and just relax, forcing the sign to go and round on the map a bit more. Um, but mostly in that situation, the sign's going to reset. It has TP. The Kindred's going to reset. Fresh monies. Fresh by, fresh after taking plates, and they're going to rotate down. So I'm not a huge fan of the Alicia. She definitely played it risky. The Ari is fed thanks to our early actions and the Kindred just being basically a, a lizard. But caution, please. Caution. After these great plays, no, sometimes it's okay to take your camps, reset, and then swap sides, try and push the mid lane and so on. In this case, I don't, I'm not a fan of staying out this long because the Jace isn't, yeah, no, no. Definitely, she stayed out way too long. She misread a little bit of the tempo, and she's just lucky that they were ahead, that it worked. So if you're behind or not as ahead as she was and they were, you'll find yourself in a precarious situation, my friends. Okay, right. 417, obviously good. We have the Blasting One. We have the Alternator. We have the Ampton. We have the Dark Seal. Uh, you could sell pots for Control Wards at this point. I think sometimes it's okay, but it's 11 minutes, so you still kind of need it for your skirmishes. I think I would keep it this rotation, to be honest with you. But usually I have a control wood up on the map, so I'm not really losing out on any vision, so it's an easy decision. I think that's okay. I think you can one-shot people without your pot, though, so... 11-12 minutes, would I sell it with a huge lead for control woods? 50-50. 50-50. Depends naturally what I am. If I'm a tank, yeah, definitely. As an assassin, or a mage, like, uh, at least a bit more caution, maybe. Chain CC, beautiful, over pushing Jinx, alt flying through, here we go. Actually, it's smacked, that's nice. Sion's not pushing the bottom lane, so he got five plates top lane. Another two plates here. This is ca this is gold back in their pockets, you know? It is actually technically preventing them from getting bounties, though. I love Elise for this, though. Take the Raptors on your way to mid lane, scan, hit the cocoon, they die. Chain CC is absolutely exquisite. That's all you're looking to do here. You're looking to enable your team. That is not the baboose. Okay, look, shadowing, clearing wards. Zillane shows up, hit your spiderling, save and shadow. Kindred shows up on the bottom side here. This is over aggressive. Why would you run it like. I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> And that's why it's great. It's fun to watch this because this is what it what this is what it's like looking at coaching sometimes. What are you doing? Why are you waffling? What are you standing at? What are you looking at? What do I do now? And then you can see this. Even a master Korean Elise is going. Well, what do I do now? And it, it happens. To even the best of us. But here, hold the midway. If we've got no other camps, we do have Wolf Camp up now. It's a forty second timer on the mark. Once you snack it, so I think here you can obviously try and just kind of zone and prepare to not take that camp. But don't not take a camp to deny a mark, just delay it, you know, you still want your camps to feast. Kindred though, is level 8 and you're level 8 because I think we really messed up here, we could have pushed to take this and dive this sooner, we could have taken the dragon sooner, we could have maybe punished a little sooner before the plates were taken top lane, I think a little bit of agency would have been good in that particular scenario, but obviously I like a little bit of messy because I think it gives us actionable things to talk about, it's not complete runaway snowball destruction, but I think we'll what, what are you learning from this video? Cocoon into hook into charm equals... Well, unless they miss them all. Which is what they've done. Happens, man. Happens. Take this crap. Thank you so much. Good support, gamer. 
Um, activate the dragon, the dragon, with your spider link kamikaze mode. Jinx is now topside, trying to hold this versus the ranged Jace, which is obviously a better matchup than the Scions had, at least so far, specifically with CS. Uh, support and uh, jungle roaming. Scion is versus the Jin. In current, we're not really pushing the map. This is important, so let's swap to this vision. Look. Look. Okay, so luckily Jace is able to snack that. Kindred goes on a very deep invade, but Kindred's comfortable taking this. What did I say? I said in coaching the other day um, with a Kindred. I said in coaching, this Kindred took a fight with a top laner two levels up and died. And they were like, well, that's just an int. And I said, yes, it's an int. But at the same time, learning when your champion can actually take fights down two levels is huge, huge to understanding your damage output. And you just saw that from the Kindred, right? The Kindred is now a level up because the Elise has... Anyway, do that. The Elise is really not pushed into the jungle enough. And every time she shows and waffles and waits to try and set a trap and be an assassin, the Kindred has made, been able to get stuff back. So, not always a fan of that kind of stuff, but... Main thing is here, you've enabled your lanes, you stop the Kindred early, definitely frustrated them, and you can 100% watch out them. And two dragons, one a Herald to one Herald, we take that. That's what we need, ladies and gentlemen. Heralds and dragons. Because when you want to push the map, you don't want them to have all the stats. You don't want them to have the heralds in their pockets. You don't want them to have like 18 plates, which in this case they do. So I guess that's why she's been cautious. But the, the lack of farming here from both junglers is very concerning to me. I, I, I would recommend watching, you know, the, the main channel videos recently to look at like the farming and the ganking split, like making sure you can do both. Because I really focused on that in the coaching videos. Um, sometimes here it's just a bit too much sort of sitting in bushes waiting to make picks. As you can see it, like, we can feel it. You're watching this game, you're watching it live on Twitch now, you're watching it on YouTube. Like, when is something going to happen, you know? And she's just, look at this, just looking for these picks. And that's why the vision is so important. So here, definitely the control wood is, is must-have. Because you don't have the scanner. Let's see, this is good if you can get in. Here we go. This is, this is what she's been looking for the whole time, the Elise. But again, she's down a level. All right. Shadow around the back here. Did they see us is the question. Oh, that was nice. Plant, plant. You got to use your repel to avoid. Oh, <laughs> well played by everybody. That was fun. That was fun. Really nice E though. You see the anticipation? Low ping helps, baby. Low ping helps. Actually, in my old apartment in Belgium, I had um, nine ping, eight ping sometimes. I moved to this house when we bought a house a couple years ago. And um, now I'm at 2119. It's very unfortunate. The 9 ping, 8 ping was so good for that kind of stuff. And you feel so good when it happens. Nice rotation to the mid lane though. You push the Kindred away from the fight. You, you dive and kill the mid lane who's out of position. Open up that Herald and now we can push. So it's been a bit of a struggle for this Elise in their comp to use Elite to push the map. Someone asked this in the bootcamp Q&A and you guys often ask in the uh, comments. But now we've finally done it and it's... Bit of patience, I definitely would have wanted a bit more farming while we were doing stuff. Don't think we want to take the inhib here. Don't think we want to take the inhib at all, because we've got over a thousand, almost 2,002 members. Your gold lead isn't a gold lead right now, and you're kind of low on resources. Um, so for sure, the Elise is playing supportive early game carry. And I think this is a, it's a, different, a different way of playing than a lot of Elise's will play. What are we at? 13 Dark Harvest stacks, always good. And it's a little bit of a different way than early game junglers think about the game, but highest KP in the game, controlling the objectives, setting the traps, setting the picks, not worrying about so much farm because we are, at the end of the day, a stun bot <laughs> who can still watch our people. So this, you know, I'm not seeing it built a lot at all, but the idea here is that the Night Harvester proc will replace the need to have electric heat. So you have the scaling from the Dark Harvest plus the, this is a very nice skin. I'm looking forward to making this thumbnail for this one. It's a good skin. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely Night Harvester plus a Dark Harvest. Good combination. Classic. We used to do the Night Harvester for the PTA as well. But then you kind of have a double proc, right? I do think a rocket belt is really, really fun and, and good on a lease as well, though. So keep it in mind. Obviously, a little bit of feel is involved. Okay. So Jin took the red. Um, we're not yet 11. We could take this to get 11. I think we should probably have taken it. So... A little bit of selflessness is good, but this is too selfless. She really is ignoring farming cadence and just using the early game power of the champion to rotate the fights. But we could have taken the red, gotten the 11, and now headed to the Scion, right? Same outcome for us. 
So definitely do that, in my opinion. Hello, Brigger. Okay, Jinx. These Jinx ults, man, they're actually hitting. You guys see the Ash buff for the projectile on the on the ultimate arrow, man. Prey somewhere is very very excited. So now look at this. Watch the least in the map here. You see, team caught in a fight. We are two bot. We killed the scion. That's great. Two v one. Enemy team says we have numbers advantage. Let's go in. You immediately rotate. Do not go back to farming now. Now's not the time to farm. Now's not. Now's the time to rotate. Let's see what we can get. Mm hmm. Out of range. All right, back down to the dragon. Man, this is not what I thought the game was going to go like, looking at the match history, right? You guys agree? We thought this was going to be Turbo Giga Stomp. Instead, they're being super reserved and patient. Everyone's winning, and they're just playing safe. And I think that's so big. That's the message here. Pushing the map slowly, patiently, and safely. Uh, it's kind of like those... Uh, <laughs> we, I'm so, I grew up in South Africa. We'd have these um, HIV AIDS talks, uh, even as young kids, like 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, because it's so, the rate is so high in South Africa. Uh, this kind of, kind of like how they talked about our dating. <laughs> Take it slow, safe, be patient. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing about that. It's, it's sad, but it's also funny. You gotta have a little bit of dark, dark humor there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's basically the, the message here from the Elise. It's that don't feel the need to necessarily overcommit to push the map, you know, especially if they're scaling and if one throw gives them the runaway win, you lose. And how many times has it happened to you guys playing a Rek'Sai, an Elise, uh, an early game champion, and you go ahead and try and push the map too soon, too aggressively, you die, you get picked, they get barren, they get bounties, and now you're at scale. It happens a lot, right? So a little bit of patience is very, very useful. But I do recommend the Kindred gameplay before this for a bit more of a faster closing out of the game. And obviously, I don't think the Elise has done that good of a job um, in terms of her keeping her experience level up. Could have definitely done better, but you know what? Maybe this is just her playstyle. She's a low econ jungler. I think there's a lot to be said for being a low econ jungler because you have... Ooh! Ooh! Is that Jace from McCain? Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is. Whoa. That's why in Korea they fear that champion. Also, that's why I feel like Kennen and Jace, I just don't want to see them in Worlds again. Can we do something about that? Can we do something about Kennen and Jace in Worlds next year, please? Don't want to see them. No more. Enough is enough. Buff owns ultimate. Bring him back. Not biased at all. Don't totally almost have a million points. Anyway, into the Baron. Secure it. Bait it then. That whole team is being so measured. And what's funny is. I'm anticipating, I'm always anticipating the YouTube comments or people complaining and blaming their team. You cannot blame your team. You see the target selection here? That's what's crucial. You cannot blame the team because the Elise goes through the Soraka, the Zillion. The thing that's going to keep Jinx alive, you go for that. You push it out of the fight, you assassinate it. Let your team handle the Jinx. Don't go for the Jinx when there's a Zillion ult. Don't go for the Jinx when there's a Soraka. Kill the Soraka. Kill the Zillion. Target selection is the most important thing. And now we've had Smite top nerfed and everyone was saying, not everyone, a few people were saying that like having a split pusher like a Trinomir was less fun than facing Janna top lane. I don't know what kind of alcohol they were drinking, but um, it would probably even um, knock out Kimi Raikkonen. So this is good from the sign. He can offset pressure and try and get something back for his team. The blue team will have to make sure that they're offsetting it at all times and ba someone's backing at the right moment. So they get an inhib, Sion tries to, tr Sion tries to answer. He isn't able to do so because someone fell back. And sometimes that has to be you, my friends. If you are the most fed and their split push is really fed as well, please understand that in this situation, take it, yeet yourself back to base and do your business. So even if he takes it, it's actually not so bad because you can push it up and get really, really fed from it. But because he didn't take it, Sion's on the top lane. Rest of the team now have taken mid lane. This is wide open. He's going to perma split this. He has a leash teleport that was used so we can track it. Let's now join our team with the rest of the band and go to this. How to close out games, push the map, when we have Baron and we've reached a good point. Okay, excuse me, I apologize so much for clicking away there. Uh, please accept my apologies. But once you've taken one inhib, no, go back mid lane, take another. I did a VOD review before this, um, where, t where Kha'Zix with 17 kills and zero deaths lost the game in low elo because they just kept running it down mid. Mid lane, push the side waves, push it up. If your team doesn't join, you can do it yourself. Move into their jungle, make a pick if they're disrespecting the map, which they were in that uh, situation. And that's the game. And if they don't disrespect you in this particular situation, yeah, what's going to happen? <laughs> Baboos has given up. Baboos. 
Um, if they don't disrespect it and they're kind of sitting in their base, if they have a split push, you kill them. And again, just don't go too deep. Use your lead to make sure you kill them. Very actually slow, methodical, closing out of a game, using a bit more of a supportive jungling style. Low econ, high presence on the map, good objective control. You know, this is not the at least you're used to, but if you're looking to emulate this kind of play style, this is actually very good because when you have low econ and you can make plays, imagine if you're rich. You can do a lot more. So I always like kind of trying to jungle with lot, not a lot of gold. And then I can translate that when I have when I do have a lot of gold, it's just free win, basically. Using the limits of what you need to make plays at the low end is very important for learning how to carry games. That's what I think. Well, interesting game. Haven't had it at least in a while, so it's nice to see she, see she can still work. Make sure you're looking for those early dives. Make sure you're abusing uh, the enemy jungler frequently, often, and always, such that they're always playing from behind. And then focus your win conditions, get your objectives, and slowly, methodically, and almost bit yawn-like, you can close games out. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed and learned something. My Zarda GG Volleyball Guide will help you learn the ways of the bear. The bootcamp starts next week, as I've said before, free on Monday. For early game jungling enthusiasts, we have the Kindred video before. What else do we need to talk about? Hmm. Keep your beards fresh, lift your weights, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next tutorial.